Hey guys, what's up? I'm Sean David and welcome back to the show. Kenny Smith is one of the most beloved TV analysts on TNT. I mean, that guy has been working for so many years for NBA television now that it's kind of easy to forget that he's also a former NBA player. And as it often is with former NBA players in their memories, they were the greatest, they could jump the highest, they were the greatest players on earth. And I felt, okay, let's have a reality check on the career of Kenny Smith and see how good he actually was in his NBA days. But before we start with this video, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also click on the notifications button so you always know when I upload a new video. And I would say let's start with the video right now. Kenny Smith was born on the 8th of March in 1965 in Queens, New York. And that guy started to play basketball from a very, very early age. He played some of his earliest basketball at New York's Riverside Church. Kenny was named a McDonald's All-American in 1983 and was one of the best high school players in the country. Still, his mother made sure that Kenny always stayed focused on his studies too. Kenny, how did you get, how did you get into college? I was very academically inclined. I was a student athlete of the year in New oh, York City. Oh my God. I was. My mom, bless her soul. Sweet lady, mister. Yeah. She was a school teacher, so back then there was the ruler. So when everything, anything under a C, I got the same thing I got from the, the nuns I got Catholic the ruler, school when I was... And I got that as well. Yeah. Kenny then joined Michael Jordan in 1983 and played for the legendary coach Dean Smith at the University of North Carolina. Let's take a look at his college stats. In order to keep it simple, I'm focusing on the major categories. So in his first freshman season in 1983-84, he was averaging 9.1 points per game, which isn't the greatest. But if you take a closer look to his assists, five assists in his freshman season, that is definitely incredible. Also for a point guard to average over 50% from the field is also definitely not bad at all. In the following season from 1984 and 1985, he was increasing his points and also his assists. As already mentioned, assists were Kenny Smith was definitely great. 6.5 assists is definitely a great number, especially for college level. Also, he was adding 1.8 steals per game, but that was logical due to Dean Smith's great defense on his teams. In his last season, 1986, he was almost averaging 17 points, 6 assists, 1.5 steals, so definitely numbers for a good player. Plus, you have to remember, players that played North Carolina for Dean Smith at that time were never known to have the greatest stats. I mean, even a Michael Jordan was just averaging above 20 points per game. Game. So 17 points in North Carolina, not too bad at all. In 1987, Kenny Smith entered the NBA draft. And even though it was a very weak draft class, Kenny had no idea where he would end up. If it would be a lottery pick or if he would be somewhere at the end, he had no idea. At the end, he was the sixth pick by the Sacramento Kings. The Sacramento Kings select Kenny Smith from North Carolina. North Carolina has produced great players year after year, Larry. Well, they have, and this is one of them right here. It's consensus first team All-American. He led North Carolina in scoring and assist, and in fact, is North Carolina's career assist leader. He's an outstanding player at that guard position. You can play him at the two guard, you can play him at the one guard. I prefer to have him, I think, at the point guard. At 6'3 and 175 pounds, not only does he shoot well, but his biggest asset is being able to handle the basketball and get it to the open man, whether it's in the transition game or the half court game. The Sacramento Kings at that time were a really, really bad team. And this is exactly why Kenny received a lot of minutes for rookie, 35 minutes per game to be precise. And he had a very good year number-wise. He made the NBA All-Rookie team, but in hindsight, he has a very pretty and unique look back on his rookie season. I think about uh, the fact that, Kenny, you played on a team um, that what you were, I'm trying to think of what your record was. Uh, not good. But it was not good. Um, was it tough to, to play every night? Uh, did you often take the floor knowing you were going to lose, that the Sacramento Kings were going to lose that night? No, you, you have a delusion that you're going to win games. But In fact, you were, 20, you were 24 and 50. Yeah, you have a delusion, but, you know, Bill Russell at the time was our coach, and, he, and he, we had an interesting concept. 
with me as a rookie. He, he said to me on the bus, he said, you're going to have to sit next to me on the bus the whole time. And I was like, <laughs> I didn't want to do that. I'm like, I don't want to sit next to the coach the whole the bus and the plane rides and everywhere. Oh, so he, so we, I started walking to the back and he grabs me back. He said, young fella, you got to sit next to me. I'm like, why do I have to sit? Because he's a loser. <laughs> he's a loser. And he's never, they're never going to win. And so so LaSalle, LaSalle Thompson wasn't one of the guys he pointed. He's like, you can't call these guys losers. You know, what are you doing? He's like, I'm trying to trade them. <laughs> Nobody wants them. Nobody wants them. And if you don't believe me, you can come in the office and sit with me. So Bill Russell was a... Very keep it real, coach. <laughs> Are, were those losses tough to take, Kenny? I mean, when you yeah. lose 58 games in a season, I'm imagining that from when you started playing organized basketball, you hadn't lost 58 games in your no, life. No, no, no. I mean, it's difficult. And you, my agent used to say he could tell when the season started by looking at my what I was spending, my spending habits, because in the season I would spend more money trying to please myself and make make myself up. So I would spend much, I would buy things for myself. Tell to me, make Kenny, how would, what kind of, what kind I would of buy items cars, would you, what kind of I would buy jewelry, you buy to... I would buy all these kind of things just to make myself feel better. You spend more money because you know you're losing. You know, back in the days at the All-Star Game, there were many players who always wanted to compete at the three-point shootout and also at the slam dunk contest. And Kenny always signed up for, right, the slam dunk contest. And Kenny Smith, who competed in the three-point shootout, the first player ever to compete in two events here. Charles Barkley could do that if we could get him to do it. He could go into the three-point and the slam dunk. Oh, Kenny Smith surprised us a couple of years ago, and he may be on that track again. Great explosive jump and the good timing off the bounce by Kenny Smith. After two and a half seasons with the Sacramento Kings, where Kenny Smith was a starting point guard, he was then traded to the Atlanta Hawks, which meant for him, well, now you're coming off the bench. Only half a year later, he signed with the Houston Rockets in 1990, which was his best season. 17.7 points per game, 7.1 assists, 2.1 rebounds, simply his best season in his career. Now he was playing with a dominant big named Hakeem Olajuwon. Now Kenny received a lot of open shots, which made Kenny work hard at his outside shot. In 1992, he shot 43% from downtown. The Rockets were a yearly title contender, and in 1994, playing against the New York Knicks with Patrick Ewing, Kenny won his first NBA championship. To be fair, Kenny Smith didn't have the greatest final series because Derek Harper was making life miserable for Kenny Smith. Because of the hand checking, Kenny really had a hard time bringing the ball up the floor. But of course, the great Houston Rockets team among Hakeem Olajuwon sealed the deal and won the NBA title. But Kenny got a chance to redeem himself and only one year later in the NBA Finals playing against the Orlando Magic. In the first game of the series, Kenny Smith broke a record and helped the Houston Rockets to be on track for the second NBA championship. So Kenny Smith won two NBA championships with the Houston Rockets. Now let's have a look at his career numbers. As we mentioned earlier, he started his career with the Sacramento Kings, averaging a lot of points since he was the go-to guy of that team, especially in 1988 where he averaged 17 points. When he joined the Houston Rockets, his role changed a little bit. Of course, Hakeem Olajuwon was the main guy of that team, but of course he also got more open shots. His shooting percentage over his entire career was always incredibly good. If it was from the field, from the three-point line, or even his free throws, Kenny Smith was just a pure shooter. So how good was Kenny Smith? Well, he was a more than average point guard. Especially in his later career, his basketball IQ was always off the charts, but he was a great leader on the floor, a great floor general, and the perfect match for Hakeem Olajuwon. And yes, of course, he never was a superstar, but as I already said, a more than decent point guard. 
Hey, you guys, if you're active on Facebook, I can really recommend Open Court. As an NBA fan, you should find everything you need. If it's funny NBA videos, impressive highlights, or even NBA news, I check out Open Court every day.